Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. Welcome to the video where we'll be discussing past year, past year questions for the year of 2018 and 19. And we will discuss question number one itself, which consists of chapter one matter. Okay, for the year of 2018 and 19, for question one, we have three questions. Question 1A, 1B, and 1C. So we're going to discuss all the questions together. Question 1A, bromine has a proton number of 35. Figure 1 shows a mass spectrum of bromine. So this is the mass spectrum where the y-axis is percentage of abundance and our x-axis is our m, which is our nuclear number as well or our isotopic mass. Okay, so question number 1, write the notation for all isotopes of bromine. So here they ask you to write down the isotopic notation. Okay, how to write down the isotopic notation? For your isotopic notation, what you need to have is your atom itself. But this one, you have to write down only the symbol. For the case of bromine, the symbol is BR. Okay, for example, of, of for example, we have chlorine. Chlorine, the symbol is actually CL. Okay. And A is your nuclear number or your atomic mass or your isotopic mass. Uh, based on the figure itself, is here your uh, x-axis. Okay, and Z is your proton number. Proton number is given in the question itself. So here, it mentioned write the notation for all isotopes of bromine. Okay, so actually for bromine, we have 79 bromine and we have 81 bromine. This is actually the abundance. Okay, so how do we write it down? Again, first I'm going to start with 79. We're going to start with the symbol. The symbol is BR. Okay, and then our nuclear number. First, we have our 79. Okay. The number of proton is given from the question itself, 35. So here, 35. So that is the first one, okay, 79 bromine. And then we will continue with the bromine itself, the second one, bromine here. Okay, the number of proton is still the same, 35. But then the number of your isotopic mass or nuclear number or your atomic mass is 81, okay. Okay, so this bromine, these two bromine is actually our isotope. This isotope is actually the atom with the same number of proton but different number of neutron lah or different number of nucleon. Okay, so that is for question number one. Okay, so question number two, calculate the relative atomic mass of bromine. Okay, so for calculation of atomic mass, it's actually your sum of chemi over sum of chi. So, chemi chi. Okay, so from the question itself, uh, or from our uh, mass spectrum, we can know our Q is and what is our M. Q stands for abundance. How many? Uh, how many percentage um, of the bromine uh, is there? Okay, M is your isotopic mass lah. So based upon here, we know that the abundance is our y-axis. Q and um, for our x-axis here is actually our M. Okay, so I'm just going to write down when my Q is 51, actually my M is 79. And when my Q is 49, my M is 81. Okay, so from here we can calculate our average. Okay, so starting when we calculated the sum key, key this is actually our average atomic mass. It's not relative. This is one the average atomic mass. Okay, so what is the formula? So this is the formula for the average atomic mass. Okay, so this is sum of chemi. So first we're gonna calculate the chemi for number one for fifty nine times seventy nine. Here is sum. Sum it means that we're gonna add with the chemi the second one. So this one lah. Sum of key again, key is our abundance Q. So, this one is actually we're going to substitute or we're going to sum up our Q1 and Q2. Once we have substituted the value into this formula, we will get the value to be 79.98. Okay, but then for the average atomic mass, we have the unit itself. Okay, the unit is atomic mass unit or we call it as AMU. Okay, so this is the steps. Okay, this is not the end yet. The question asks for the relative atomic mass. Okay, so for the relative atomic mass, relative means it is unitless. So we're going to cancel out the unit. Okay, we don't want the unit AMU. But how to do it? Okay, so this is the formula. Average atomic mass divided by 1 over 12 
comes with 12 carbon EMU because actually here one this is EMU unit so the EMU can be cancelled out here 12 and 12 can be cancelled out okay this step is actually to cancel out the unit lah okay so we're just going to substitute the value into this and then again you don't have to show that we're going to cancel out this one and cancel out the unit itself so the relative atomic mass would be 79.98 Okay, so that is the step, steps. Uh, they, they ask you to relative atomic mass. Okay, so the sum key means sum key is for your average. For the relative, it's actually you have to cancel out with 1 over 12 times 12 amu itself. Okay, so that is the solution for question 1a. Question 1b, a reagent bottle contains a stock solution of 0.9% by mass of sodium chlorine and ACL. The density of the solution is 1 gram per c, uh, centimeter cube. So it is the same as gram per milliliter lah. Okay. Okay, so the first one question, calculate the mole fraction. But then before, I'm going to write down um, the formula for the mole fraction. I'm going to extract the information from the question itself. So this one is percentage by mass. Okay, so this is the symbol lah. Okay, density. Okay, so here is the symbol. Okay, next, what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to write down the formula for the percentage by mass and the formula for the density of the solution. Okay, so this is the formula for both of the concentration measurement. Okay, next, what I'm going to do is actually, okay, since the information here, we only have this one and we only have this one. Okay, so actually we're going to assume. So what... We can assume, okay, I'm just going to write down. Actually, there are three cases that we can assume uh, that um, when the question gives you molarity, actually, we can assume the denominator, the volume of solution. So, for the volume of solution, we can assume it to be 1 liter or 1,000 milliliter. Okay, next is actually when we use, if the uh, question gives you molarity, we can actually assume mass of the solvent to be 1 kilogram or 1,000 gram. Or... If the question give us the percentage by weight, we can actually assume again, this one is all the denominator lah. Uh, denominator tu maksudnya pecahan kalau 1 over 2, uh, di bawah ni is our denominator. So the mass of the solution for percentage by mass, we can assume this one to be 100 gram. Okay, so for our question here, we don't have molarity. We don't have molality, we only have percentage by mass. So in this case, we can assume the mass solution to be 100 gram. Okay, okay so that's only the hint lah. Okay, for the question 1 itself, the question 1 want to, uh, to want us to calculate the mole fraction of an ACM. So mole fraction is our X. Okay, so how do we define out the uh, mole fraction? So I'm just gonna uh, slide here. So the question wants us to find out the mole fraction of NaCl. This is X lah. Okay, NaCl ni is actually our solute to form uh, the one that we're gonna dissolve in water to form our solution. Okay, so how do we calculate it? It is the same as if, so I'm just gonna write down here is X. In this case, I'm gonna write down X is x solute is equal to the number of mole of solute divided by number of mole total so if total is solute plus n plus with solvent so solute in this case is our NaCl okay so this way is NaCl solvent and the universal solvent is H2O okay so this one is the general one this one is with the formula of the species itself so I'm just gonna write down here to be number of mole of NaCl. Again, this is the solute divided by NaCl here plus NH2O. Okay, so this is the number of mole. Okay, so this question wants us to find the number of mole of NaCl or our solute and the number of mole of our solvent, which is our water. Okay, how are we gonna find out the number of mole? Remember that number of mole is equal to mass divided by molar mass okay but then before we're going to find out the number of mole we're going to find out the mass first lah okay so again from the question itself what do we have it's actually percentage by mass okay and then from the percentage of by mass because the information given is not enough so we're going to assume the mass solution is 100 gram so it is important for you to write down assume the mass of solution to be 100 gram and then we're going to include the formula 
And then we're going to substitute lah. Okay. Okay. Percentage by mass is actually 0 0.9 based on the question. Mass solid is our unknown. Mass solution, we assume it to be 100. When we substitute the value, then we can find out the mass of solute to be 0 0.9 gram. Okay. Again, why are you going to find out the mass? Because from the mass itself, then we can find the number of mole. Based upon the information, we have only the... Uh, for the first one, we only have our solute okay so this is the mass of solute however we can't substitute into it into our mole fraction so we have to find out the uh, the number of mole okay so the number of mole of solute which is our uh, NaCl itself okay so the mass is actually from here the molar mass is actually from our list of constant where Na is 23 and Cl is 35.5 okay so uh, as you can see here Again, from the list of constant, it must be on your most right-hand side lah. Okay, so NA 23, CL 35.5. Okay, the value will be 0.01538 mole. Okay, so this is only the number of mole of our solute or our NACF. Next, what we're going to find out is the uh, mass of solvent. Okay, mass of solvent or our H2O lah, the mass of our H2O, then we can find out the number of mole. Okay, so how we're going to find it out? We're going to use mass solution is equal to mass solute plus mass solvent. Where mass solution is the one that we assume. Mass solute, we have find out from here. So mass solvent is our unknown. Then the mass solvent, we can find out to be 99.1 gram. So here is only the mass of solvent or the mass of H2O. Again, in our mole fraction, we want it to be in number of mole. So, I'm going to find out the number of mole of my solvent or uh, in this case, the solvent is equivalent to our H2O. Okay, again, mass here is from this one. The molar mass, okay, hydrogen is one but then we have two hydrogen. Oxygen is 16. Okay, so when we calculate it, it to be uh, the value is 5.5056 mole. Okay, so here we have find out the number of mole of our solvent or H2O. Okay, so we can substitute into this value. Number of mole of NaCl, we're going to substitute into this value. Okay, then you will find out the answer to be 2.79 exponent negative 3. Okay, so here I'm just going to write down again. Again, NaCl, our number of mole of solute. Um, our NH2O is actually our solvent here lah. Okay, you don't have to write it again. You can only uh, straight away substitute boleh. I'm just going to write down again pun boleh. Okay, so this question is actually about assumption. Okay, where we can, when we can assume is actually when we don't have enough information lah. Okay, uh, so this is the solution for question 1B, 1 Roman. Okay, next question, still question B but... To Roman, okay, they ask us to calculate the molality of an ACL solution. Again, first what I'm going to write down, um, the, uh, the information given from the question and the formula. I'm just going to write it down again because I do not know whether uh, we're still going to use this one because this one we actually have been using it for question number one. I'm just going to write down the formula as well so that we know that we will use this formula to calculate something lah. Okay. And then, piece from the question number one, we have a lot of information, right? We have the mass of solute, the number of mole of solute, the mass of solvent, and the number of mole of solvent. So, I'm still just going to uh, include the value for the next question. I have written down information from the question uh, one Roman. Okay, so the question two actually wants us to calculate the molality. So what is actually molality? Molality is actually our small m. Okay, uh, they ask us what is the molality? So what is the formula of the molality itself? Molality is number of mole of solute divided by mass of solvent. But mass of solvent must be in kilogram. Okay, so the number of mole of solute. So based upon the information that we have from question number one. So this is the number of mole of solute. The mass of solvent. Okay, we have here 99.1. 99 but then 
from the previous one this is actually the unit is in gram but for the case of molari molality we want the mass to be in kilogram so i'm just gonna change it to be in kilogram so divide by 1000 0 0.0991 kilogram so i'm just gonna substitute this value into, into this and the mass of solvent into the denominator once you have calculated it, you get the value of molality to be 0 0.16 molan. Or you could also write it down as mol per kilogram. Okay, but then I'm just going to write down small m. Okay, this question is quite straightforward because the number of mole of solute and mass of solvent, actually we have found it out in question number one. Okay, so that is for question uh, B2 Roman. Question 3 Roman. Calculate the volume of the stock solution required to prepare 100 ml of 0.01 molar and ACL solution. Okay, so we have our stock solution here of our NACL. We're going to dilute it into 100 ml of 0.01 molar and ACL solution. So this one, uh, 100 ml is actually volume, molarity and ACL is your M. Okay, so we want it to be diluted into this lah. Okay, but then they ask us to calculate the original volume of the stock solution. Okay, so here I'm just going to denote this one to be M1 here, V1 here. Okay, and then so the volume of the stock solution here will be my V2. Okay, V2 will be the question lah, the one that, the one that we're going to find out. Okay, but then if we have M1, V1, we, still have, we will have our M1, V1 equal to M2, V2. Okay, but then I'm just going to write it down here. So, this is actually the information from the question. Okay, but then again, we have to find out our M2 lah before we're going to find out our V2 itself. Okay, so from this information, again, I'm just going to write down the information from the question as well as the formula and the information from question uh, 1 Roman. So this is all the information. Right now, what we're going to do is actually first we have to start to find the M2 first lah, the concentration so that we can find the V2 where we find the V2 using formula M1V1 equal to M2V2. So M stands for molarity and what is the formula of molarity? Molarity is the number of mole of solute divided by volume of solution where the volume must be in liter. Okay, the number of mole of solute we have found out from this one, actually from the question 1A1, 1B1. Okay, but then our volume of solution we have we haven't found out lah. Okay, so where we're gonna find out the volume of solution? Actually, we're gonna use the a density of solution here. The density of the solution is given from the question itself, is which is one gram per centimeter cube, or is the same as one gram per milliliter lah. Okay, mass of solution. Okay, so we have our mass solute. We have our mass solvent. So we cannot find out our mass solution because mass solution is equal to mass solute plus with mass solvent. Okay. So, volume solution is what? That is our unknown. Okay. So, we're going to find out the volume of solution to be substituted into here. Formula for molarity. So, I'm just going to substitute this one and this one into this part. So, we will get the value of the volume of solution is 100 min. Okay. But then, remember, for this one, the volume of solution for molarity, we want it to be in liter. So, I'm going to change the milliliter to be 0 0.1 liter. Okay, so now we can find out the molarity of our solution to find our M2 where the number of mole of solute is this value and the volume is 0 0.1. So we find out the molarity to be 0 0.1538 molar. Okay, so once we have known the concentration, so this is actually our M2 lah. M2, the concentration is 0 0.15 3, 8, molar. Okay. But then again, the question actually wants the volume of the stock solution, the V2. So, we can use our formula M1V1 equal to M2V2. So, M1 is 0 0.01. V1 is our 100 mil. M2 is the one that we have just found out, 0 0.1538. And V2 is our unknown lah. 
Once you have calculated the value, the V2 is 6.50 ml. Okay? So, um, again, the question asks to calculate the volume when um, we diluted the solution to be 0 0.01 molar and the volume is 100 ml. So, we're going to use this formula. Let's look for question 1C. Silicon tetrachloride, as I say alpha, can be prepared by heating silicon in excess chlorine gas. So this is the equation and as you can see, it is a balanced one. Okay, question 1. Calculate the mass of silicon needed to prepare 400 gram of SiCl4 if the percentage yield is 42.5%. Okay, so based upon this information, what we have, so this is 400 gram. So the question asks, what is the mass for silicon here? Okay, but then they give us more hint based upon here if the percentage yield is 42.5%. Okay, so what is the formula for percentage yield? Percentage yield is the actual yield divided by theoretical yield. Yield is meant by product lah. But yield is something that is tangible, something that we can see. Usually in solid, which is uh, usually the answer in gram. If it's in liquid, usually the value given is in ml. Okay, so yield is our product. So product in this case is our SiCl4. Okay. So how do we know the actual yield? Actual yield... Usually, we got it from the question itself. Question will give us the actual yield. Theoretical yield is the one that you have. You must find out yourself through calculation. Lah. Okay. So, in this case, our 400 gram okay, is actually our actual yield. Okay. So, I'm just going to substitute. Okay. Percentage yield here is 42.5. The actual yield here is actually 400 gram. Once you have written down the value into the formula, you will get the theoretical yield to be 941.1765 gram. Okay, so this is the theoretical yield. So in theory, as I say, alpha should have 941.1765. Okay, so why do we have to find out the theoretical yield? Because theoretical yield is the one that we're going to do through the calculation where we're going to use the stoichiometry lah. Where 1 mole of silicon, 1 mole of uh, silicon tetrachloride is equal to 1 mole of silicon. Okay. So here, we have to do the stoichiometry lah. 1 to 1 ratio. So again, because we only have the information about silicon product, silicon tetrachloride. Tetrachloride, we're going to compare it with our unknown, we're going to find out our silicon itself. Okay, so, once we have written down, it's one mole to one mole ratio. But then when we're comparing here, we must find out the number of mole. Right now, what we have is actually only the mass itself. So, we're going to find out the number of mole. So, the number of mole of SiCl4 is actually uh, mass. Uh, this divided by our molar mass. So the mass is again the one that we have find out the theoretical yield. The molar mass we can find out through our uh, list of constant. Silicon is 28.1 and chlorine is 35.5. But then remember for chlorine we have 4 so chlorine must multiply by 4. Then we will get the value of mole to be 5.5331 mole. Okay. So now, once we can find out the mole of SiCl4, we will substitute to this value equivalent to X mole of our silicon. Since this is a one-to-one -one ratio, so we know lah, the mole of silicon is the same one which is 5.5331 mole. Okay. okay, this is the number of mole. Okay, again, but then the question asks to calculate the mass. So, how are we going to find out the mass through the number of mole? We're going to use the formula N equal to mass divided by molar mass. When we substitute the value, okay, for the molar mass of silicon, it's actually 28.1, where we have found out through the previous step of calculation. Then, we will get the value of the mass of silicon is 155.48 gram. Okay. So, this question, um, usually the question asks to find out the percentage yield, but then they ask, they give us the percentage yield itself. 
Ah yang ni dia macam terbalik. Sebenarnya dia bagi mass reactant. Then you have to find the limiting reactant. To find the mass of product. Then we're going to find out this one lah. Tapi yang ni terbalik. Daripada, daripada percentage yield. Tahu kamu punya product. Then from your product. Then you can find out the information about your silicon. Okay. So kali ni kita akan assume as if kita punya silicon ni is actually our limiting reactant. Okay. So that is for question C1 Roman. Question C2 Roman. If 15 mole of chlorine is used, determine the amount mole of unreacted chlorine. Okay, so previous step, um, the previous question, actually we know the uh, mass of our SiCl4 and then from here we find out the mass of silicon. So actually from the question, it seems so that the mass of silicon here depends on the mass of SI solid here lah. Okay. So it means that from there, uh, it is understood that the silicon is actually our limiting reactant. Since our silicon is the limiting reactant, the Cl2 will be our excess reactant. Okay. Okay. So here it mentioned that if 15 mole of chlorine is used, so this is the one that is available for the reaction lah. 15 mole is the one that is available. Okay. Determine the amount mole of unreacted chlorine. So this means that it means that the unreacted is our excess lah. Okay. So first what we're going to find out from the previous step we know that the number of mole of silicon which is 5.5531 mole. Okay. So this one is the one that is the limiting reactant and the use one. Okay. So we can find out the number of mole of Cl2 for the use reaction. So we're going to do stoichiometry. 1 mole of silicon equivalent to 2 mole of Cl2. We also know that the mole of silicon is actually 5.5531. However, the mole of Cl2 is our unknown. So I'm just going to write down X. And when you calculate the value, the X to be 11.0662 mole. Okay. So, this is the mole of chlorine that is reacted with our silicon. Okay, so here I'm just going to write down, this one is the reactant. So, again, the question asks, determine the amount of unreacted chlorine. So, how to know the unreacted chlorine? Number of mole of the unreacted is equal to what is available minus the one that is the reacted one lah. So this is the excess one. Okay, so the available is 15 mole. I'm going to substitute it here. The reacted is the one here. Okay, so we're just going to substitute the value to find the unreacted chlorine. Once you have substituted the value, then you know that the mole is 3.93 mole. Okay. So that is the solution for question 1C to Roman.